Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. I am so excited about a lot of things. And uh, George Lizos is joining me here today. But I want to say this. You know, I love doing this. And I love that I am where I am. And for many of you, you've been following the show for 20 years, even when it wasn't the Dr. Pat show. Uh, We have had so many incredible people on. But today's show and the book and the messaging Oh my goodness. Hello. This is what we all need to read now. And I say all because I'm going to put me at the front of the list. You know, in 20 years doing this, you all have traveled on this journey with me. We have brought the most incredible people to you from this show. Uh, one of the people gave a fabulous testimonial. Actually, we ha- I would say we helped him launch his career, right? Benny Dougal, Dougal Frazier. Yeah, I miss Diggy. Yeah, Yeah. and when you meet people like George, and you all going to meet him today, I'm hoping we can open up the phone lines for all of you too, because I'm not sure when George got the idea to write this book. My guess is he got the idea because super intuitive, super like plugged in to being this healer, intuitive healer, light worker, creating positive change in the world. That's what our network is. The Transformation Network's about that. But what is it that we need now? He's also, you know, number one best-selling authors. You know, light workers got to work. I remember that book. <laughs> I was like, why do we? Um, but, it, you know, whether you know him from his podcast, the mystery school, whatever George is doing, however George is doing it. The one thing I want to say about this book and Lydia, I'm going to hold it up here in a minute and I'm sure you're going to have your own images of it. Whatever you all think, raise your hand, raise your hand. If you want to know this, do you want to know how to protect your light? Raise your hand, everybody. Do you want to know how to do that? Because this right here is a practical guide to energy protection. I believe it is one of the most important visionary future things, right, that is here now that we must learn. It's not even optional anymore. It's not even like an optional sidebar conversation. It's not. We're in a world where we are so plugged in to the ridiculously who knows, comments, social media, expanded brands, information that has us swirling like this, swirl, right? Everybody swirling. Come on, everybody swirl with me. I could do like the swirl dance right now. I do the swirl dance. How do you get out of it? You have to protect your light, George. It's great to have you. Welcome to the show. Oh my goodness, Dr. Pat, thank you so much for having me. I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you so much for this beautiful introduction. And great to hear that my friend Dougal Fraser was on the show as well. I love Dougal. We've had several conversations in the past. Yeah. I mean, when we we loved helping him launch that first show and then seeing where he went with all of that, because that's what our network is about. But none of us go anywhere. And I want to I want to just ask you this right out of the gate. I am really struck by the book, but your work, the book. Okay. Let's just get to it. The book is a result of what your calling is, George. So let's just be really clear. Every time we introduce a book, it is a representation of a piece of your calling. A hundred percent. 
when you write a book like this, protect your light. This has got to come from your life experience. So here's my question to you. I want to know, George, for you. I want to know what challenges and what obstacles did George, you, have to overcome to write a book like this? Gosh, not protecting my light almost cost me my life. So I'm going to take you back to five-year-old George, the first memory I have of myself, standing in a field of yellow daisies, staring up at the sky and wondering what is the purpose of life? Why am I here? I was one of those weird kids that talked to flowers and liked to connect with my intuition and liked to connect to the heavens. And as a result of being so different, I was bullied. I was made to feel that I'm not good enough. I grew up in a, the Mediterranean island of Cyprus, a very small community. And when it comes to all small communities, they tend to expect you to be the same. They tend to expect you to be stereotypical. And I was not that. So from a very young age, I developed this sense of I'm not good enough, I'm an outcast, and therefore I need to change myself to fit into other people's expectations. I need to change myself in order to be accepted. So fast forward to the time that I was 13 years old, that's when I realized that I was gay. In a society and at a time where gay people were considered to be pedophiles and criminals in Cyprus, it had just been legalized to be gay. So I already had all these other labels on me, the weird one, the shy one, the, the woo-woo one. I didn't want yet another label. So I'm like, you know what, there's no way I will accept this. I'm going to completely fail in life. So I'm going to do what I do best. I'm going to change myself from gay to straight one step at a time. And that's when I entered the two most debilitating years of my life, where every single day I tried to monitor the way I walked, the way I talked, the way I behaved, the way I felt, the way I even thought about people around me. Up until the point two years later, at the age of 15 years old, I realized I couldn't change who I was born to be, and therefore, and therefore I was a human abomination. And therefore, my only way out is to take my own life. And in that very dark moment of my life, I had written a letter to my parents. I was ready to put an end to it. I had a bunch of pills in my hand. And that's when I had the epiphany. You know what? You do have a choice. You can stop caring what other people think, what the church thinks, what the society thinks. And you can learn to love and accept yourself exactly as you are. You can learn to protect your light mm -hmm. rather than allowing other people's thoughts, emotions, beliefs, and expectations to dim it down. Yeah. And I had no idea how to do so because all I knew was self-loathing, was bullying. But you know how it works when we open up to change, the universe shows up for us and puts us onto this wonderful journey of healing and transformation. And here we are, 15, 17 years later, writing this book because yeah. at the time, not protecting my energy and allowing other people's stuff to become my own almost took my life. I'm so glad that, first of all, thank you. Wow. I didn't know this was going to happen. Those of us in the LGBTQ community and those of us that have really done what we needed to do to stand up, we have faced those demons you just described. Some mm. of us multiple times in our lives. You know, some of us in the hands of psychiatrists, some of us in the hands of shock therapy. But you see, that's why you and I are here because we didn't just survive it. It was part of our life's destination and calling. You know, it was part for who we are and what we need to do in the world and how we need to change it. And that's why the message from your book really stands out for me and stands out for the people now because when you come out the other side of the past three years, and we are not out of the other side of the past three years, I just want to say, um, and if you are part of the LGBTQ community, but even if you're not part of it, you all understand what just happened in the Supreme Court. So we are now being, or again, we're having a level of awareness where we now have to learn more than ever to protect your light. Can we talk about this for a minute about the energy of this? Because we are talking about an energy. When you were sharing your story, I was right there with you. 
Now, I wasn't out in a field of daisies growing up because I lived in New York, but I was on a fire escape. I lived at my aunt's fire escape. My mom committed suicide when I was six. I went to Catholic boarding school, but I was like you, I was different. And the minute that my family picked up, not my stepmom so much, but my dad, you go to Dr. Jacoby. I thought I was Elvis, just saying. I still think that Elvis is part of every one of us. But here we are today. Tell us about the importance of understanding our energy and how light is energy. Yes. So first of all, we have to realize that beyond our physical body, there is an energetic presence. We have many different bodies, our emotional body that represents our emotions, our mental body and our different subtle bodies as well. And in the same way that, for example, there is Wi-Fi, but we can't see it. Energy is there, but we can't see it. It doesn't stop making it real. It's just there. That's the analogy I use when people ask me, well, I can't see it. So why is it real? It's like Wi-Fi. Same kind of thing. So in the book, in Protect Your Light, I talk about our energy immune system that consists primarily of our chakras, the seven main energy points within our body, and our auric field, the seven different layers of our aura. So as we go through life and interact with people both offline and online, because digital spaces are still spaces, then we absorb different types. I call them energy attachments. And there are different types of energy attachments. We can mention a few of them later on as well. Essentially, Good. it's just stuff that's just out there that other people are throwing out there. And as we move through life, we just pick them up because our aura and our energy field, our energy immune system can both send and receive energy. So as we litter our energy field going through our day, it becomes cluttered and therefore it starts interfering with our emotional body, our mental body, etc. In essence, what this means is that we start thinking other people's thoughts. We start feeling other people's emotions. We start behaving in ways that are not in alignment with who we really are and what our life's purpose is. Essentially, we start living someone else's life. That's why I define energy protection as the art of being energetically authentic. It's about taking our life back and ensuring that what's ours is ours and what's theirs is theirs. I love it. And, you know, I want to really get into this now with you. We're going to go ahead and skip the break. And for those of you that are just tuning in, George, let's take a minute. Two things I want to do right away. Please tell people how to get this book, right? And and Lydia, I'm pretty sure you're sending up images of this book and George's website as we speak. And George, what is the best way for people to get a hold of you and find out more about you? Go to protectyourlightbook.com. When you get the book, you also get a free 60-minute psychic scanning online workshop with me. The book is really? available everywhere books are sold and also on Amazon. And what are they going to get with you? 60 minutes of what? I love it's that. Psych yeah, it's a psychic scanning online workshop. Essentially, I teach you in 60 minutes how to turn on your psychic vision so you can scan your body, you can scan your aura, identify all the limiting energy attachments, and therefore when you get the book, you already have done for the first part of the job so you can start clearing it. Yeah. Uh, Lydia, if you can bring up that book website and show everybody on uh, Facebook Live, really the website and what we're talking about. Look, I know... You and I are sitting here, not quite writing a book yet. Contrary to all the publicists that call me every day to write a book, I, I, I'm launching an expanded network here. Like Transformation Network is going to have 10 channels in a year. We so, need a book as well. I, I know. What the, oh, my gosh. Did you say that to me? Um, we need a book. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really interesting. I probably have to get some help from you on this, but. I know there's a book inside of me, but what I love to do is I love to honor people like you. See, that's my joy space. I love it because you have a story and it needs to be told. You don't have to be part of the LGBT community to understand that people need to protect their lives. It doesn't matter where you're coming from in life, what your race are, how you identify yourself, what your religion is. This thing that George is talking about right here energy protection we need it and we need it now um i want to talk for a minute about you know i want to walk people through how you connect ener energy pro protection and our beliefs because you do that 
and you talk about them. You ask the question, please correct me if I don't get this right. Yeah, I think you asked the, the question early on, uh, something about what are your beliefs about life? And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is my belief about life now? Right? Where am yeah. I with that? But you're also not leaving out of the conversation the fact we have to protect ourselves from our own stuff. And then there are outside things. What do you think the greatest challenges are for people? Because you really talk about them in the book in a lot of places. But what do you think the greatest challenges are for people and why they, they just have a hard time seeing that they do have to protect their life? That is such a powerful question. And usually when people teach about energy protection, they just teach like the basic processes of how to shield and how to use cool different tools that I also teach about in the book. But there is a, a deeper layer here that's very important to recognize. And it's the layer of doing the inner work. Essentially, what I teach in the book and I, I end the book in the conclusion, I say do the work. What I mean by that is when we attract some kind of energy attack, when we are energetically attacked, when we receive different types of energy attachments that mess up with our energy field, and then we use the seven step system that I lay out in the book to clear our energy, to cleanse our energy, to strengthen ourselves, then it's very important that we actualize that energy work with real life practical steps. Essentially, we have to dig deep and ask ourselves a difficult question of, what within me has made me vulnerable to this type of attack? What within me has attracted this? What within me has allowed this to happen? And when we dig deep, we identify limiting beliefs, we identify conditioning, and we identify fears. And that's when we have to do the cognitive work, the emotional work, the physical work of identifying what these core issues are that are making us vulnerable to energy attack because in spiritual truth when we are connected to source where we are when we are aligned to our higher self we are protected nothing can touch us we can only be attacked when we dissipate when we disconnect a little bit from that state of alignment which happens because we're human and it's expected and we want it to happen because that's what keeps life interesting but at the same time it's always important to identify when this happens so we can use the practices that i teach in protect your light to bring ourselves back home so this is the empowering way that i like to teach energy protection it's not about fear-based beliefs right. oh my god there is right. like people out there trying to get me it's realizing that you know what sometimes we mess up sometimes our vibration lowers sometimes shit happens and therefore we need to show up we need to have tools to mm -hmm. bring ourselves back into connection i want to just connect the dots for a lot of people that are watching because one of the things i want to go to and i talked about this a lot and you really nailed it in the beginning of the book and you take us through one of the things i love that you talk about not in your words but my, I'm going to paraphrase, is that, look, this is not really new. Go back to ancient times. I love watching like the History Channel, okay, for me, because when they show certain parts of the world, and especially, you know, recently finding out I'm from South America, I just discovered I'm looking at Chile, and I'm looking at, whoa, look at the symbolism. Then we look at Egypt, and we're thinking, now, wait a minute, what has kept these people alive? And then we look at how we now take those things and you, you nail it in your book, but in our pop culture now, you cannot go to the movies or watch like a, a popular series, I don't care what you watch, that doesn't have some kind of reference to what you talk about in the history of energy protection. Every one of them yes. has got something. Even Thor with his like, what do you call that hammer thing? Right. hundred percent. Yes. Because because I'm Greek myself. I am also a Greek. I'm a Greek pagan priest. So I still honor the religion of the ancient Greeks. So I've, I've spent many hours studying the energy protection practices of ancient Greeks. So what we do before we enter the temple is we first cleanse our hands and we cleanse our faces symbolically. And then we call upon God Apollo and we use a lot of leaves and we burn a lot of leaves with, and, and then dip them in salt water and then we sprinkle that around the temple to consecrate and create a safe space. So a lot of the new age practices that we use on this present time 
are very old age in truth. And if you go back to every single culture around the world, they have practices to bless, to cleanse, yeah. to shield, to protect themselves and their cities. Absolutely. And you know, okay, you guys just texted me. Yes, <laughs> I love our listeners. I love this is a 20 year audience. So they ask me some questions and they tease me a little bit. So you're just going to have to bear with me. Oh, Dr. Pat, are you going to mention Game of Thrones and House of Dragons again? Yes, I am. I'm going to do it right now because you just sent me this message. It's coming out. Uh, it's coming out. Why? If Am I in love with Game of Thrones? Did I find it interesting? I love the symbolism, but I also love the rituals. I love the spiritual nature of it because it all came back to that. Um, and so what we're looking at is this is a way for us to thrive in a world that could bog us down if we do not protect our light, correct? 100 percent there is an immense amount of energy around us and by the way over the past 20 years or so the world has increasingly become more interconnected both online and offline look at us right now you're all in the states and i'm all across the world in cyprus and we're having this conversation yeah. we couldn't have had this conversation 10 years ago and therefore because we have so much more energy around us it's very important to amplify our energy protection practice because it's remained the same for so long how yeah. many times can we shield ourselves with a wide bubble and expect yeah. that to work it worked in the past and it still works now to a great degree but our energy protection practice needs to become more complex, but that doesn't mean more complicated. Yeah, I love this. When you talk about this in the book, and for those of you that are just tuning in, I just want to remind everybody, and I know Lydia is, of course, showing you a lot of things. This is the book we're talking about. And I'm making reference to the book because I've read the book. So you're going to hear me mention some things throughout the book with George as we move forward. Um, and I'm not going to get to everything in the book. But... I love, I love one of the lines in the book because I'm an empath. You'd never know it. I don't show up as an empath, but I almost cried during the beginning of this show. So obviously I picked something up about your story that got to me. Too much, not enough time in the show to go into it, but here's what I've learned the hard way. One of the things you call us to do or call forward for people to do or consider doing is spiritual training. I, did I use the right term? Because I think what you say is a lack of this, and I have found this to be true. For my life up until age 40, that was pretty much it. But alien took over my body at age 40 and something changed. But this thing right here, this spiritual training, if we don't have it, vulnerable, I think is the word you use, vulnerable to attack man is that a visual tell us what that looks like george what does yes. that look like for people now in the ancient times spiritual information was accessed in like ancient mystery schools so people had to like be invited it was a very private like community nowadays it's all available online so people have like free and so much, uh, so many choices and so many opportunities to get free content and learn to develop their psychic abilities. So what usually happens is people just jump into spiritual experiences, energetic experiences, blast their chakras open, blast their energy open. They start using Ouija boards and all this kind of, <laughs> uh, of tools without knowing how energy and how the spirit yeah. world functions. It's like getting a car and driving it without having a single lesson. You'll, you'll take it places, but eventually you're, you're, you're going to have an accident like sooner or later. So it's very important to understand how energy works, to understand how the spirit world works so that you can be protected yeah. while entering into your spiritual practice. And there are many different things that we can do that can make us vulnerable to psychic attack. And one of them is getting into spiritual practices without training. I love that you're doing this. Okay, I wanna talk about what this means because this is really critical. You must have been on the other side of that. So you must know yes. what it's like to get into spiritual practices without you, right? Because you yes. and I probably, we probably had some kind of awakening. And then it's like going to the spiritual buffet and trying to eat everything at once, right? 
Yeah, let me How'd tell you when I when, you? <laughs> when I tried astral projection for the first time, oh. I did a course on astral projection, got out of my body and met all these types of different spirits and I had no training on how to protect my energy. So for weeks I would get nightmares of like low level entities chasing me in my dreams and trying to scare me and at the time I didn't know what to do with it. So just use whatever tool I had. But if I had practices like that, if I knew that I could shield myself before going to sleep, if I knew that I could center and ground myself to strengthen my own natural energetic defenses, if I knew that I had tools that I could use with those spirits in those dreams to repel them, then I wouldn't have had that experience. I love that we're talking about this. We're going to take a short break when we come back. Okay, here's what I want to say to everybody. George's book is loaded. Uh, it's not his first book. I mean, if you go to look at what George is doing and, and what he's talking about and how he helps people, please find something in the show because you may be looking at me and thinking, I don't need this kind of help. I'm going to tell you this. The more I get out in the world, the more things we do to expand positive talk, the positive TV station we are launching, the more I do, the more I need what we're talking about today not less not less when we come back george's going to take us on a journey of what are some of the symptoms what are some of the signs why is it for me my decision to enter addiction and drug recovery in 1989 opened up a door a portal for me in the spiritual realm what helped me by doing that not being completely obliterated with unstructured, untrained spiritual introduction. When we come back, we're not going to just talk about that, but we're going to talk about a whole lot more. It doesn't matter where you are. And I, George, I think you say this in the book, but again, if I don't get it right, you can correct me when we come back from break. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter how you see yourself. What you can learn is how to protect your light and protect yourself from attack. It may not be attack that somebody does willingly. It may not be from some evil person you think you know. This is much bigger than that. We are being bombarded. This morning, I had five pop-ups. I woke up at 4.30 this morning, and on my phone, pop-up, 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 on some kind of new stuff, and what made me look? I'm not answering that, George. It's George, before we go to break, how do we find out about you? How do we get the book? You can check me out. My website is georgelizos.com. On Instagram, I am at georgelizos. And if you go to protectyourlightbook.com, when you get the book, you also get a free 60-minute psychic scanning online workshop from, from me. And when we come back, we're going to give you the symptoms. The other thing I want to say is, I told you, George is an intuitive. If there is something going on in your life right now, if there's something that you want help from one of the best, George, 1-800-930-2819. Also, Lydia's monitoring Facebook. When we come back, here's what you're going to have to look for. And you're going to discover, are any of these happening to me? And really, are they really symptoms of energy attract? Then what George is going to do, he's going to help us get past them. Let's take a short break, Benny, Lydia. We'll be right back. everybody welcome back um you know I, I i often wonder and then now i don't wonder anymore i don't wonder anymore because you all know who linda is you've heard me talk about her benny you certainly do uh, lydia you know her but you've never met her but i know benny you have linda and i have been friends since 1972 and the reason i think i'm alive today and i'm not dead in some alley somewhere is because of her and her parents you know the blessing and the gift of having people like them protect my light, even if I didn't even know I had light. And you know, this is what George is coming forward and doing. And you know, you're hearing us talks about, talk about parts of our lives, some of our struggles, because we have gone through those things. And in the course of that, we have been guided to now step forward and do what we can to help you. We are not saying to you all listening that you have to go through pain and suffering and maybe some of the things we're talking about that's why George does what he does, because he's here to say, look, I know about these things. I can help you with these things. 
and you don't have to step in the potholes I've stepped into. But right now, what we're going to talk about for all of you, there are a couple of things we're going to talk about. There's so much in his book. I love, I love energy vacuuming. But we're going to talk to some of the solutions. Before we do, I just love some of the, the terms and things you put in here. I just love that you have a book that is about ritual. Thank you. Right? Everything from rainbow water to... Actually, I read your book and I actually gave my vacuum at home a name. So that's weird. Um, look, let's start out by talking about the symptoms. I know you're right. So you're probably wondering, what did I name my vacuum? Okay, I'll talk. I about love that. Yeah, what is the name? I, I'll tell I'm you very later. curious now. I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later. You're going to love it because you're going to relate because you and I were talking during the break and I know who your, your fan favorite is. I'll tell you in a minute. Yeah. Okay. Let's go through some of the symptoms because I think when people hear this, they're going to be like, really? Okay, let's go through this. So there are many symptoms of experiencing energy attack. So let's define our terms first. We have energy attachments and energy attack. Energy attachments are what's out there, these external negative energies that we can pick up. When we have a lot of them and they clutter our energy field, that can manifest into energy attack where our body, our being, our energy can no longer handle so much foreign energy and we start having emotional, mental and physical and spiritual issues. Now, it's always important to go through all the other possibilities before we and with a conclusion that this is energy attack. So we check mentally, we check emotionally, we check physically, there's something wrong with us. And if there's nothing wrong and our symptoms are persistent, then we can start discussing and, and, and wondering whether this is energy attack. So what are those symptoms? There are many of them, but the main ones are feeling constantly exhausted and fatigued, suffering from insomnia and having nightmares, feeling empty or disheartened, being overly sensitive, not having like interest in life, experiencing abrupt changes in our mood, having um, sudden feelings of anxiety or depression and not knowing why, and having different like addictive or obsessive behaviors. Now, of course, there are many other ailments that yeah. are connected to these symptoms. But when you have a few of them consistently for a long period of time, you've checked everything else and it's not that, then it could be psychic attack. Yeah, there's one on the list that I want to talk to. And then I want to go to some of the ways that you help. I was mentioning just a few things in your book, but I, I, I love how many solutions you put in your book. But here's the one thing I want to say before I bring this next thing up. I've never been able to take this journey alone. I was very fortunate to meet my first real spiritual mentor in 1997 in a very unusual way, Sedonia Cahill. Her life's path was to take people out in the desert for vision questing. It was my first. Um, but I was about eight years into discovering the new and renewed version of myself. She passed away very unexpectedly in 1999 on a trip to Morocco. But I learned so much from her, George, in a two-year period. It's hard for me to even explain it. But there are a couple things here that I want to mention to you. And there are two of them that people are suffering from now. Dreading being alone. It's in your book, I believe. I wrote it down because I'm reading what I wrote down. And then feeling unable to relax and constantly on edge. And the, the problem with that last one, George, is that when people feel like that, everybody throws at them like ADD, ADHD. No, right? Yes. It's a real and thing. 100%. And I'm glad you brought in ADHD. I'm, I'm currently finishing my master's in psychology. And the reason I wanted to do a master's in psychology is because I want to bridge the spiritual, the energetic and the psychological as well. So a lot of the times we get diagnosed with stuff and there is an underlying cause that's not being mentioned in the diagnostic manual, for example, that psychologists and psychiatrists use. So it's important to have this, integ this integral um, opinion and, and perspective on whatever is happening with us. So it's very important to realize. So give me your, the question again, because I need to go back yeah, to my thoughts. So one of the things you also talk about, and this really, I, I want to say two alone. things to people. Well, there are, there are a couple things that, that, that I pulled, I, I pulled forward because following this, you open up the door 
my language, not yours. You, I think you say, this is what makes you vulnerable. I call them triggers. You can call them what you want because the whole next section on this, but this idea of dreading being alone and feeling unable to relax and constantly on edge. I mean, anytime expresses, I just can't relax. Everybody wants to throw a label on them. Yes. But wait a minute. That's not what this is about. That's really understanding. This could be a symptom, right? Yes, it could be a symptom of as a result of a number of energetic attachments that are cluttering our energy field. So imagine that you go out one day and then you do this every single day, interacting with people, going from social media to social media side and, and picking up all these different types of energies, these residual spatial energy you pick up from the streets, collective thought forms that linger in the atmosphere are like collective fears and limited beliefs, psychic daggers of anger and jealousy that other people are sending towards you toxic energetic cords to people you have or not have relationships with that you've established some kind of uh, an ephemeral relationship with psychic uh, rape that, which occurs when other people are sexually fantasizing about you there's so much stuff that exists that can mess up with our energy field so when we do that on a daily basis consistently and we don't have a daily energy protection practice where we tune in we identify what's there so we can clear it and protect ourselves then it eventually will overwhelm our energetic system and will be will have ADHD, for example we won't be able to sleep we will have so many different types of symptoms and then on top of that, we are alone because we live in a society where we're constantly surrounded by people and yet there is so much loneliness and depression going on. Feeling like I don't have someone to talk to, feeling like there is no way for me to find support. So it's very important to be compassionate with ourselves when we find ourselves through something like that. Go for the tools that I teach in the book and learn how to consciously protect our energy and also it's very important to find community and i know that we we'll live all around the world and we we'll live online but that's also a blessing because there are online communities i have my own online community your spiritual toolkit facebook group that people can come in and they can feel accepted and they can meet people who feel like them back when i was in the spiritual closet in a in a little mediterranean island all spirituality i was taught was christianity and anything against it was the work of the devil was satanic that was what i was taught so it was me literally in my room with my spiritual books my community were my spirit guides and the books i was reading and then eventually i found an online community i moved to the uk and i expanded my circle but we are never alone because a we have our spirit friends that are constantly around us and we talk in the break about the spirit friends that we meet in our dreams and that we can hang out with but at the same time we can reach out and find online communities that can support us yeah and by the way george i want to make sure people i'm, I'm going to tell everybody again um i want to make sure you all go to george's website which is george your name george lizos l-i-z-o-s just go over there, georgelisos.com. Okay. When you go there, you're going to find a lot of things. Also, I want to make sure you guys know, if you go there, you're going to see his podcast. We do not believe in competition on this network. We believe in collaboration. So anytime I could send you to a podcast, I don't care what network it's on, I want you to go. I hope you pick up his podcast, Jessica. But when you go over there, you're going to be able to hear the messages from George directly. The other thing is he is not just talking. He has created a school. He has created ways to work. And then he's got my favorite, a free resource section. But when you go look at the book, please go to protectyourlightbook.com. This is when you go here, you'll see this extra bonus because this is a big bonus. I mean, I we do a lot of books, but this is amazing. So just go ahead and, and go ahead and click, go ahead and order, go ahead and do what you need to do. Also, can I mention this, George? Am I allowed to mention that it's available in Kindle and audiobook? Yes, Am I of allowed course. to mention? I just mentioned it. <laughs> What's wrong with me today? I'm like, Penny, I'm like asking it permission, permission if I can mention it, like, and then I mention it. <laughs> okay. Let's get to some of the solutions. We have time. I want to give people a sneak peek. Now, let me put the caveat out here. We're going to get to some of them. But man, you got like a whole chapter on energy shielding. There's so much you've put in here. For people that are just thinking, I need to start. I need to know what are George's top three? What do you want to just tell people? Top three from George right now. 
Yeah, so basically in Protect Your Light, I teach a whole seven step system of protecting our energy. The main three steps that you need to know right now are identify, clear and shield. Identify meaning tuning into your energy and identifying what's there so you can clear it. Second step, cleansing practices so you can clear what's there. And then we go into shielding where you create with your intention a powerful energetic shields around you that do something. Now, what do those shields do? In the book, I distinguish between three different types of shields. Amplifying shields that raise our vibration and strengthen our natural energetic defenses. Transmuting shields that tra transmute energy as it comes towards us into love and light so we receive it positively. And then repelling shields that ward off energy of attack that's coming towards us. And the reason I distinguish between these three different types of shields is because for so long, we've just been using a single shield, white light bubble, but it's not enough. That's an amplifying shield. It raises your vibrational frequency, but you need different types of shields for different situations. Someone starting right now, I would recommend layering two shields. I talk about layering in the book as well. Layering an amplifying shield with a transmuting shield. Okay, that's my go-to. The um, amplifying shield that I recommend is the rainbow light shield, where you shield yourself in a bubble of rainbow light. The rainbow ray has all the colors of the chakras, and therefore it raises the vibrational frequency of all your chakras, and therefore strengthens your energy immune system. And then you layer that with a transmuting shield. My favorite one is the golden pyramid of light, where you visualize yourself literally in a golden pyramid of light. The pyramid is a sacred geometrical symbol of connecting heaven to earth. And the golden ray is the frequency of source. And therefore it has transmuting frequencies, allowing whatever energy comes towards you to be transmuted into love and light so that when you receive it, it doesn't energetically attack you. Yeah. Um, by the way, I just went online and I bought this book for a very dear friend of mine um that i Aww, know thank you yep because I, I have my copy of the book of course but i want to do this book with her do you see what i mean this is my best friend i just bought it for her gift wrapped it sent it over there i want to be able to do this with her because one of the things i wanted to ask you about george and and it's i know it's important for you and i know it's been important to me is for whatever reason, there are moments that I feel very alone and very lonely. Thank goodness for my spiritual practice, but I am not exempt from what you and I are talking about. What is the difference between me and maybe my stepmom and maybe my mom um, that committed suicide or my stepsisters that drug and addiction killed them? The difference is I got saved early on. By, I'm not quite sure how, except I know it was from whatever higher vibrational entity did not want me to leave the planet. But that doesn't mean I don't go through this. So one of the things I want to encourage people about is this is the kind of journey you can take with another person. When you partner up with somebody to protect your light, then you have a partner that could see things you don't see about yourself. Is that right, George? 100%. First of all, in the book, in Protect Your Light, I teach the 360 degree, degree vision process. This is a process that I teach you to turn on your psychic vision. And if you get the, the psychic scanning workshop, that's what it's all about. You'll be able to have your psychic vision turned on and therefore you'll be able to scan yourself and other people for different types of energy attachments. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing this with a friend, you can literally practice on one another because sometimes a lot of the times we can't see our own stuff. I still need to go to other healers because I can see what I can see, but I cannot see what I cannot see. <laughs> and therefore you'll need someone else who'll be able to see this in a more objective way and help you go through it. And also accountability is so important when it comes to starting anything new. And when we're starting a new practice such as an energy protection practice, our ego won't want us to do it because it's something new and change is hard and nobody likes to do things uh, to do new things. But if we have someone that we can keep each other accountable, it's so much more powerful. Um, I know we've got a few minutes left. There are a lot of things in the book that people will read about. But there's one thing in the book that I really, I, I, after going through most of the book, and then I went back again this morning, 
I caught it caught my attention. And it's really something that's not in most books like this. Can I get to it? It's one of the things you talk about shielding and you say creating an amulet or talisman. I love that you included that, that people can create this themselves. Can we just spend a, a few minutes on this? Because I wear things and underneath, right? Right? I get asked from more people, why am I wearing a Muslim? No, this is ancient Sanskrit. Sarah Main and Damayanti creates these. Um, we have them. Can you talk about the power of that? Yes, I love that you asked this question because that's probably one of my favorite chapters in the book. Now, amulets and talismans are used interchangeably in popular culture, but they are different. So let's talk about the difference really quickly. Amulets repel and ward off negative energy. Talismans amplify and create positive energy or positive intentions. So, and by the way, an amulet or a talisman can be anything. So you can choose something Sanskrit or you can use the Mati or Nazar, the evil eye essentially. Thank That's you. all been used for, for like thousands of years. You can choose any of the old amulets or you can create your own symbol. You can create anything and call it your amulet. You can even just have a crystal and just with your intention decide that this is an amulet or this is a talisman and then you instill it with your intention as to what you want it to do you can create an amulet and charge it with a violet flame shield that i talk about in the book and then it's going to have transmuting qualities you can take a crystal and you can charge it with the um with a rainbow light and it has amplifying qualities so this way you get to create magic you get to take something physical because we're physical beings we like working with physical palpable objects and you can charge those objects with a kind of energy and intention and use that to protect yourself to protect your house even to protect your so, like your social media sites i teach how to create digital amulets and talismans as well i'm going to be talking to you because we're getting ready to rebrand and launch you know our full network and that is a very important thing but you know the reason i brought it up is because i didn't realize it till re till i read the book that i unknowingly happened yeah. to be wearing one is a protector i don't know if i can get it up here around my mic one is a protector this right there is a shield yeah. this is ancient sanskrit and that was sarah main she has studied it she teaches it and it is one of her pieces right and it, and, and it represents the positivity of Damayanti. It represents power and strength, right? It represents all of that. I didn't know I put them on the same necklace. I don't even know if I'm supposed to have them on the same necklace. You are supposed to have them. Like, okay. It's your intention that matters. And I, I have my, my, my earring, sorry, in the other one. Yes. I have my earring, which is a thunderbolt, which for me, it's an amulet of Zeus, like the god that I work with for protection. So same thing. Yeah. Uh, the answer to the, uh, I, we have the best listeners, I'm telling you, they don't forget anything. Are you ready for the tough question they're asking right now? Go for it. Dr. Pat, are you going to tell George the name of your vacuum? Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, I thought you guys would, it's Athena. I have a giant poster of Athena. Um, I don't know why. I have an amazing poster of Athena. I have a poster of Athena in my bedroom. People come in my bedroom. They're like, oh, I got to get up. No. And it's a beautiful, I uh, I think Susan Boulay did these um, beautiful, and it's Athena with the Medusa head. It's just gorgeous. So my vacuum is called Athena. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> right next to me right now, I have Athena's owl, who is one... <laughs> <laughs> with one of the spirit guides that I work with for writing. So there you go. <laughs> and I, I know Athena, Athena will be honored to have my very powerful vacuum. George, I can't thank you enough. I know we've got a few minutes left. Um, again, I want to remind people how to get the book, but also you have classes, you have other things. Can you just talk to those for a minute and let them know yes, how they can course. connect? So you can work with me one on one. I do the psychic clearing sessions, which is essentially I scan your aura, I identify everything and I guide you through the process of clearing and moving forward. So if you go to georgelizos.com, you can find about my psychic clearing sessions. I also have my online course called Intuition Mastery School, where I teach you how to do this work, essentially. My book, Protect Your Light, you can get at protectyourlightbook.com, where you also get the free 60 minute psychic scanning workshop on social media. You can find me at 
at George Lizos on Instagram. And I would love for everyone to check out my online community on Facebook called Your Spiritual Toolkit Facebook Group. And I wanted to say to everybody, in addition to what you see with the online workshops, there are private sessions. Um, one of you have also asked me, does George work with businesses? Yes. If you go here, you will see that he does a spiritual business mentoring session. So I want to get that out to you, Mia. You asked that question. Yes, he does. Um, but there are other things you'll see that he does um, here as well. He's got a new workshop also about past life skills. George, I, I can't thank you enough. I want to thank you for, I want to thank you for being you. I oh want to thank goodness, you I'm for so not honored. compromising on who you are. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. And I appreciate both of us and honoring yeah. us for yeah. being willing and being courageous yeah. to do the work no matter what other people think, no matter yeah. what people other people say. They throw us down and we stand back on our feet, rebor rebirthing ourselves from yeah. the ashes and doing this work, shining our light. That's what being a light yeah. worker is all about. And I will say this, I'm going to be calling you and, and scheduling a session because I want to tell people this. When you are on the verge of either new or renewed, when you are on that verge, don't bring things forward with you that are bogging you down. Don't bring these energetic attacks. Don't bring these attachments with you because you will bring everything about them with you and you probably don't know what they are. That's what George does and does very well. George, I got about 30 seconds, but I want to know your personal message. What do you want to leave us with today? personal message is ground yourself today because that's the most powerful thing you can do to protect your energy instantly. Establish a connection with the earth because Mother Earth, she's the OG energy protector. George, everybody, please. Uh, we've told you how to get the book, Amazon. It's also available in Audible. It's also available in Kindle. Everything's available. You can take a look at the Intuition Mastery Bootcamp. There's everything there. Just go to his website, georgelisos.com, L-I-Z-O-S.com. And I know Lydia's been putting stuff on Facebook. Benny, Lydia, George, thank you for making this an amazing hour that I got the honor to spend with you all. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right, everybody. Let's take a short break. We're not done yet. We're, we're coming back. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you.